Hey everyone, I live. Um, I know it's been a really long time since the video has come out, but uh, recently I've had some time and some motivation to jump back into Planet Coaster. Um, I'll spare you the details, but just been really busy with uh, some big life changes. Everything's good, um, but now, like I said, finally have some time freed up to uh, to play some Planet Coaster. Um, I thought that we'd start episode two here of this series, um, kind of just showing a recap of, of where we left off. Um, if you remember, basically I just created this little shopping center with the McDonald's and the bank and the gas station. If you remember, we put spawn points in the gas station there and then the McDonald's here, which is where you see uh, these people walking out of. Um, so yeah, really happy with how that has turned out. Um, and initially when I created this series, I was planning on um, you know, doing basically just a recreation of, of the town that I, I grew up in, but um, I've kind of got some different ideas now. I kind of want to pull in some things from other areas of Colorado and Denver um, and kind of just try to make it as unique as possible. Um, you remember too, this area is going to be like one of those outdoor craft festival things that a lot of times carnivals or fairs will have. Um, basically, I don't, I don't really know if they do these anymore. I'm, I'm sure they kind of do, but basically this was Etsy before Etsy existed. Um, you know, people can just come and uh, sell things that they've created and made. Um, you know, you get artists and uh people selling like anything from you know homemade preserves to uh one of the classics was always like dream catchers um stuff like that so we're gonna uh work on this first i think and then we'll work more into the uh the main street and the carnival from there okay so i got sidetracked um i haven't started over there yet i wanted to get a, an idea of kind of scale and an idea of how much i needed to to have from like a reference standpoint for this main street here uh, especially because i want to make sure i get this area really fleshed out before i jump into the carnival um so anyway, I started with this building, which is, uh, it's actually houses a restaurant in the ground floor um, in Denver. And it's just one that I always notice every time I drive by it. Um, it's got really great detail. Um, you know, I love all over Denver. There's just tons of amazing brick buildings um, that have all of this ornamentation and uh, detail brickwork and it's just something that I really appreciate so wanted to um, drop this in here especially you know I think it fits great on the corner here um, but yeah I'm gonna do an interior um, not gonna do anything for upstairs obviously I want to you know some of these buildings will have interiors not all of them will um, just to one for my sanity and uh, two just to to make sure that when it's done um, you know it, it runs decently well so anyway um this is what i've worked on so far uh, i meant to show more progress in between but kind of got into a groove and um just ended up finishing mostly of the most of the exterior so anyway uh i'm gonna get some more work done and i'll bring you guys back for some progress okay so working on another main street building here um this one it has got this really cool brick arch over these windows and I'm making this using those classic I think it's just a brick accent piece um, it's these these pieces here um, obviously for my purposes I just need this edge um, got a little bit of Z fighting going on but I don't think there's any other way to get around it unfortunately um, so I'm going to if I did this right, hopefully, and hopefully I don't crash the game, um, I'm going to flip it over and copy it to this side. Um, and this is actually a really good example of where building on the global grid uh, is your friend, especially since they made changes to the way the advanced move tool works. Um, so if you go to the, the world axis, um, you can see that it lines everything up nice and neat. Um, so the final positioning of this building might be off of that global grid, but right now it's on it and it makes uh, for building stuff like this much, much better. Um, so yeah, I'll do something like, something like that. Um, and then, then now I'm gonna have to come in and adjust because some of them are, you know, some of them need to be below 
So yeah, so I'll do more of this and hopefully this building doesn't take too long because I've had a couple of uh, the advanced move freezes working on this here. Okay, so uh, fleshed out a little more detail here. Uh, was working on, it's got some, the building in particular has got some like ornamental design work here. So I was messing around with these. Um, I think these are like adventure pieces. Yeah, yeah, statue stuff from the, the adventure pack. Um, yeah, so these things are super versatile. I know a lot of people have used uh, the walls as like concrete and stuff, but they work really well for, for this purpose too. Um, and then just got some windows here providing some of these edges as well. Um, but I really like the, the color combo here um, with the sort of tan stone and the red brick. Um, I think it's coming together really nicely. So hopefully, um, I can easily copy this chunk and put it across the face of this building here. Okay, so got got into a groove again and jumped way ahead. Um, I wanted to show, was hoping to show a little bit more of the, the progress work on this building, but um, you can see here's that, that archway we were working on with the windows. Um, you know, from there it was just pretty easy to fill in down here, so did the, the brick columns more of that window tilted with these uh, windows sunken behind it. And then um, again, working on the global grid, I was able to just copy that and then copy it across and then added some more nice detail up top here. Um, and uh, really, really happy with how this turned out. I, I put these windows in here for now. I haven't decided if I'm gonna do you know the glass especially with uh, another thing that I've gone back and forth on for this project is using any uh, theme maker toolkit items. Um, the one that I may end up utilizing is um, there is, let's see, uh, it's actually, I'm pretty sure they're in the scenery. Um, art shapes, yeah. So these, these beams, um, are very tiny and can be incredibly useful for and they've got bigger ones too yeah so anywhere from that size down to uh, I guess it's the same but I don't know where that yeah so down to that uh, and then I think they've got longer versions of this one longer versions of that one uh, but these are let's see who are these from corkscrew loops workshop um, yeah, so if, I'm not sure. I think I have the, the OBS set where it's just recording Planet Coaster right now. But yeah, Corkscrew Loops Workshop. So I'll, I'll pop a link in the description to those. Um, these are maybe the only theme maker toolkit stuff that I want to use. Um, just because recently there's discussion about how if someone removes some of that stuff from the workshop that basically it will just disappear from your park um, so I want to minimize the chances of that happening um, one thing that you know if this ever does get finished and released on the workshop is it probably will have stuff from every single DLC um, just as a, a heads up but anyway so I might come in and use glass and use those pieces to sort of draw out the panes here um, I haven't I haven't decided yet but for now I think that works just fine um, and yeah really liking the look of these two together and uh, yeah we'll continue to not all of the buildings will be this ornate I'm gonna put some in there a little more plain um, and we'll continue to work our way down down the main street here Okay, so I hopped over to the other side of the main street, um, and this is just going to be like a sort of bar and grill type restaurant. Um, it's based on a, a restaurant in the town I grew up in, and uh, yeah, I wanted, like I said, wanted to kind of break away for some, from some of the more ornate uh, type buildings to something a little plainer. Um, I still have to fill in the, the roof and everything, obviously, but um, this has like a really cool, almost hangar style roof that's, uh, you know, arched over this way. So uh, that's going to be fun to build here. Um, and yeah, still, still kind of trying to feel out how exactly I want this area to come together. Um, I might do like... I might do like a, a pathway through here. I'm thinking about having like a river come this way and maybe a street that goes along it this way. Um, and then this could be like a connection in between those two things down to the river. So um, still 
like I said, it went from being almost a direct copy to now I'm sort of playing around and, and trying to piece together my own things, which uh, is fun, but it's also more difficult. It's a lot easier uh, to just copy what already exists than try to, you know, create it on your own from scratch. So um, we'll see how that continues to progress. Um, I do want to get in and finally, I know at the beginning of the episode, I was like, I'm going to work on the fair, but um, at some point here, I will, I will start tackling on that. I just got uh, sidetracked with these buildings here. Okay, finally, finally, um, working on the, the craft fair portion here. Um, so I did find some tents like these on the workshop. They were uh, they were theme maker toolkit ones though, and they the file size is pretty large. So I ended up just making these as best I could. They're not perfect, but uh, you know, from from a distance, they certainly sell exactly what what it's supposed to be. You know, those those pop up tents, um, and it does a good job of hiding the you know the quick service or the I can't remember what these are called. Uh, vending machines <laughs> they have some they have some sort of category in the game though but um, anyway it does a good job of hiding those the one problem I'm running into you know again I was trying to avoid using toolkit items in the park but one thing I've found is so they'll they'll make their way in here but then they get stuck um, because I've used these curb pieces, uh, the barriers to provide the supports. But yeah, they get they get stuck as this poor gentleman is. Uh, oh, it's SP Ridley. <laughs> Come on, man, get out of there. <laughs> um, that's hilarious. But uh, yeah, so so I'm probably going to end up using those those toolkit items just so that people can walk in and out without getting uh, without getting stuck, but, uh, yeah, I like how this is, this is showing up here, uh, or, or coming together, I should say, and I'll probably make the grass look a little more ragged in here, um, just so it looks like it's really been trampled down, um, throughout the week. So I got a little bit sidetracked again. Um, I realized I needed to add some more details to the, the back of this building, especially since it's so exposed to, you know, everything else. So the, I put in little, like, electric meters i'm not sure what they look like in you know outside of the u.s but uh ours ours look like that there's like a little meter in here and you know it's measuring how much power each each of these suites would be using um and then just put in some doors for you know for employee access into each one of these shop fronts here um whoa. and uh, also changed the name of this to Nail Golly. <laughs> that was a suggestion in one of the last videos. I can't remember who suggested it, but um, fitting given the fact that Nagali has become a meme of itself. So um, <clears throat> then I've worked on kind of putting together these little just sort of ones that I can copy and paste into different one of these tents. Um, you know, just wanting to make it somewhat simple on myself. You know, I think as you're walking through, yeah, you know, would each one of these be unique? Yes, but if you know you spread it around enough, it creates the illusion that you know you've got people selling all kinds of different stuff in these these little tents here. Um, and I'm really, really happy with how this is coming together. I think it it totally looks like one of those craft fairs, um, especially with the peeps coming in here and everything. One thing that I was having trouble with is once I opened up some of the rides down here. I was having problems getting them to come back into this area of the park um, or of the town. And so I had bathrooms back here, which was doing the job for a while. Um, but instead, I sunk in uh, one of the, the kitty cat rides here. So all these people and gold chests are, are making their way down here. Plus, there's a bathroom. So um, this does a really good job of bringing people back through here. And the only, really the only access is to come down this main street and then come in through here. So I won't actually connect this path over here, um, just to make sure that they don't completely bypass, you know, all of this to, to get down here. So um, that's doing a good job of that for now. Hopefully as I continue to, to make more rides and stuff down here, um, they, they, you know, continue to make their way through this area. Um, but, uh, I've, I've also lowered the prices of all this stuff. I think I've made all this stuff free. So hopefully that's another thing that, um, you know, really brings them back here. 
Uh, just adding more details too. I've created, um, I found this awesome, um, let's see, what is that? Who made that? It's like a power truck or power trailer. Uh, I don't remember what it's called. Um, I'll, I'll find it and put it, put a link in the description, but yeah, so this provides power to this entire area. I'm probably going to plop in like a couple of smaller generators too, but, um, we've got cables going throughout, you know, you can see kind of back here, there's cables running in between all the tents and, um, each, each area has cables running to it that would be supplying power. Um, and then I think, uh, I don't, I don't know if I had these up. Um, before, but uh, added these what are supposed to be temporary fencing. So it's got these support legs on them, and I uh, wanted them to be kind of wobbly. Um, and I think that that really looks like the sort of temporary fencing you often see at stuff like this. So, uh, so they would fence this off at night. They would lock it up so that people don't have to completely pack everything up um, from their tents, and then you know easily open the next day. All right, I needed a break from the uh, the tent village over there, so working on what's going to be a hotel, um, and I'm gonna try to make it functioning using the you know the in-game hotel building uh, with the rooms and stuff. But um, this will will likely go on this corner down here. Um, this is based off of the old uh, the old electric company in Denver. Um, they have like lights built into the brick like this, um, and it looks really cool at night. Um, I wish that these twinkle lights wouldn't light up during the day, but, uh, you know, it's hashtag good enough because at nighttime it looks really, really cool. Um, another thing I realized is that for these buildings, um, you know, it's not, it's not like in the theme park where you're not going to have light coming from the windows at nighttime. Like if this is supposed to be a real town, I need, I need these windows or at least some of them to be lit up. So I'm going to be utilizing some of those uh, some of the windows that do light up um, and, and replacing some of these other ones so that it you know it looks more natural at nighttime um, well so yeah I'm gonna keep working on this building um, it's taking a lot longer than than I thought um, I don't think I've done anything else to this tent village over here maybe uh, maybe these uh, porta potties. So the, the I also found some on the uh, the workshop that are theme maker toolkit ones. But again, trying to avoid that stuff as much as I can. Um, so these are. Let's see, I can't remember what they're. Yeah, here we go. Porta potties, um, and these are made by duct tape for them. Awesome. So yeah, I will also include a link to these in the workshop below because they're really well done. Um, the file size is very small on those, much smaller than the, you know, the one that, uh, that someone made for the, the toolkit workshop, but, uh, you know, which they're, they're amazing. You, you know, if you go on and search for them, they look incredibly accurate and they even have a little bit of a, you know, Planko vibe to them. But, uh, the file size is just a little, a little bit big. Okay, so now for the, this building's finished for the most part. Um, now that I, you know, now that I have it in place, um, I think, I think maybe it's a little too narrow this way. Um, so I'm probably going to add another section like this out this way, uh, especially because I want, I want the lobby interior to be, you know, to be finished and the, the entrance to the hotel, the entrance building or whatever, um, is, is obviously pretty large. I want to hide it as much as I can and I want it to look like an elevator. Um, so in an effort to do that and still have room for the lobby, I think I need to make it a little bit, um, a little bit bigger this way. So, uh, I don't, I don't have it in me to do right now cause I just finished this, but, uh, it, it's going to have to happen at some point, I think. Um, but again, this building really, really shines at nighttime. Um, but you can see again, like I was talking about, I need to have some, some light up windows. Um, so I will, I'll continue to mess around with that as well and find, um, you know, replace these as I want breaks from, from other stuff. Um, one thing that, uh, one thing that I'm realizing is, is that 
I'm doing what I always do at the park is I get distracted and I move on to something else instead of just finishing the work because we all know the tedious stuff isn't the most fun thing to do in Planet Coaster, but um, if you just leave it all till the end, then that's how projects never get finished. <laughs> um, hashtag Jubilee Gardens. But uh, anyway, I, uh, I'm i not sure what else I'm going to work on now. I might jump in uh, to here, or I might just force myself to, to bite the bullet and, and jump into to this area over here and keep working on the carnival. Uh, but I'll bring you guys back in a bit. So I decided to follow my own advice and continue working on something before before moving on to the next thing. So I um, started adding more lighting on the ground here. Um, a couple of these planters that I stole from Jubilee Gardens. Um, added this awning. I think I might uh, do this on all of the windows. I think that might look nice. Um, maybe change the color. I think I'm getting a little bit too much red with this here and the sidewalk um, and the flowers, which uh, these flowers I also took from Jubilee Gardens. Um, this is stuff that uh, Mike Sheets was working on for us, um, you know, kind of detailing some gardening stuff around Jubilee Gardens. And he made these hanging baskets, which I believe he's going to be uh, releasing a, a set of uh, on the workshop at some point. He uh, he just released a whole bunch of plants. Um, I think I have those, or trees I should say. Yeah, he just released this tree set, um, which should be easy to find on the workshop. I think it's, I think it's on the front page of the workshop right now. So um, yeah, he's going to do something similar I believe to this, but for uh, for planters, um, you know, hanging baskets and planters and stuff. So, um, anyway, I just took those, they look incredibly realistic. Um, how he's able to do this stuff with the plants, I don't know, but he makes it seem like there's way more foliage options in the game than, than actually exists. So, uh, thank you for those, Mike. I'm going to use them everywhere in this town, and hopefully your uh, your planter set comes out soon as well, because that will be perfect for this project. Uh, Kinderly, the coaster whisperer, um, made this amazing coaster for me. Uh, it's also available on his workshop, so I'll include a link in the description for this thing. Um, it's incredible. It's so I sent him a couple pictures, you know, initially uh, talked about the, uh, you know, the Olympia coaster, which is the famous, you know, it's got like five loops or whatever, um, Schwarzkopf traveling coaster, but uh, he did his own design like only he can do, and it looks amazing. Um, you know, in America, these types of traveling coasters are not common. Uh, we don't really get them very much, but... I wanted to have coasters in this uh, project just because um, you know it's such a big part of the the Bro Nation community, and um, it's just I don't know it's something that I've always been jealous of for you know European fun fairs that they always get cool coasters like this. So um, this is the first one I'm going to give a go at one myself. Um, there's the uh, the Eurostar traveling coaster which is an inverted coaster uh that i'm going to try to recreate as well but um yeah kinderly thank you very very much for this coaster um you know obviously fun fairs really shine at nighttime so you got to see this thing lit up at night with the the sparkle lights here or twinkly lights um so incredible lighting you know this was an awesome touch having these uh you know flashing lights on there and just the layout is great. It's super compact. Um, you know, it's obviously pretty big relative to the town, but given you know, given Planet Coaster scale, I don't, I don't think there's any way to, to get anything any smaller uh, from a coaster standpoint. And it's, it's probably still pretty, pretty accurate. So, again, thank you so much, Kinderly. Much appreciated. 
So this is the early, uh, early stages of my attempt at uh, recreating the, the Eurostar inverted coaster. Um, still need to smooth it out a little bit, although I might try to intentionally uh, leave it pretty bumpy because everything I've read about these traveling coasters is that the amount of times they get broken down and reconstructed, um, you know, and the wear and tear of travel that they just turn into, you know, they're kind of really uncomfortable to ride. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll pop up a couple photos here of what this coaster looks like in real life so um, you get a better idea of what I was going for in case you're not familiar with it. But uh, and, and this color scheme is not the final color scheme as when I was messing around with, but um, I, I don't really like it. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, this thing is going to have to be entirely custom supported, which uh, is going to be you know a tedious task, but. Uh, you know, so, so I might not do this all at once. I'll probably do this in bits and pieces as I need a break from other stuff in the in the project here. But um, I'm pretty happy with the layout. I think there's a few things that once I get supports in, I might have to tweak and change. Like I'm looking at this. That's probably way too close together, uh, especially once you get supports in there. Um, but uh, somehow I was able to cram it in there. It's got a little bit larger footprint than the one Kinderly made, but um, still, still pretty happy with the scale of it. Um, it's almost the exact height of the real one. Um, so yeah, all things considered, I think it will be a, a good addition to the fair here. Once again, not listening to my own advice and getting distracted with other things. Um, I started messing around on, uh, I'm a subscriber to Epidemic Sound. It's uh, royalty free music and sound effects and stuff um, that a lot of people use for, for YouTube. But uh, um, so I started messing around there. I started searching for like sound effects and things like that. And I found like generator noises. So, um, I'm hoping the audio will get picked up, but yeah, you'll have generator sounds. And so I did it there, smaller ones. And then this one is really loud over here. So yeah, I think that's just gonna add to the atmosphere, you know, kind of that, that realism factor. And then the other big addition, which I, sh you know, saved zero progress uh, shots of, is uh, is this church. Um, so this is St. Archer's Church of Scale. Um, you know, everyone that's a, that's on the Bro Nation Discord, um, well, and really a lot of people who've, who are continuing to play Planet Coaster always use the archer as scale um, because they're the closest thing to the size of of the peeps as possible so um so yeah so this is the the church of scale down here um i was going to try to put one of these archers like at the top or on this sign here and it just didn't look like if there was a stone version of these that's one thing if someone did create on the uh on the workshop i would 100 percent use but uh yeah, they just didn't look right. I think that's about where I'm going to wrap it up for, for this episode. I was hoping to have more stuff finished um, for you guys, but I just jumped around too much. So uh, in the next episode, we'll definitely work on correcting some of the issues with that building that I talked about and working on more of the main street here. Um, and I, I really do want to get into this part, but I'm afraid again that if I start over there I'm gonna leave a lot of stuff unfinished over here so um, we'll see where we go I'm, I'm uh, just gonna start chipping away at it and um, yeah we will see where it takes us but uh, thank you guys so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it and uh, hopefully in the next episode we get stuff a little more finished up but uh, appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys in the next episode